overcome We will not be shaken We will not be moved Jesus, you are here
there's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes I am Cause I'm a child of God Yes I Jesus, not of 
affection, our devotion, pour out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion, pour out on the feet of Jesus, and our affection, our devotion. Devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus. We love you. Oh, oh, how we love you. You are the one. children, God. Thank you that because of that, your love is perfect, God. God, so right now we pour our love back on you, God. Give you all that we have, God. You're so worthy of it all, God. within us, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you satisfy
TGP and TGP Global, friends, family, whoever is watching today, we, we are glad that you can be with us. Once again, we get the opportunity to be in God's presence, to spend time waiting on him and worshiping him, and, and also to spend time in the word, chewing on, on it and what he has to say to us today. Because spending time with God, spending time in God's presence is the investment in your life that makes makes the difference, it helps you go the distance in life. We've been in a series called We Believe, and today we're talking about We Believe in Prayer and Fasting. We want to just begin by reading the Word of God. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 14. But let's pray as we start. Lord Jesus, we come in your name. We thank you for this opportunity to, to, to hear from you, to, to understand more about your, your mission and your ministry here on earth, that we can continue it, live it out as we're called to. So Lord, we ask that, that as the word goes forward, would you, would you speak through me clearly? And for every, every listening heart, watching heart, God, would you speak deeply into them? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is what it says in Mark chapter 9, verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. Verse 15, as soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Verse 21, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Whenever I read this passage of scripture, I, I, I see the, the concept of prayer. I, I see a dialogue that happens between Jesus and this father, that, that, that it's Jesus and the father connecting, talking, praying, if you will. He, the father's praying to Jesus, asking of Jesus to, to come and enter into the situation of his son. It's an interesting passage because Jesus had just been away with a few of his disciples and they had, had, had watched him be transfigured. And, and, and they had come to see that, wow, Jesus was God. Jesus was more than what they thought. It was amazing. And, and maybe it was that Moses experience, them coming down from the mountain with Jesus and Jesus shining, looking a little brighter, a little different. Because when the people in the crowd saw him, they were amazed. They were awestruck because of what they were seeing in Jesus. But here all this is happening and there's an argument going on and, and, and there's a lot that's taking place. Jesus sees it and he speaks to it. And, and, and in, in verse 16, he, he speaks directly to all of them and says, what are you arguing about? His words cause this father to kind of come out and make himself known and he begins this dialogue with just him and Jesus and sometimes when I think of prayer that connection that we have with God it's it's as if sometimes have you had that experience where where it's like like God is calling you into prayer 
I don't know, maybe you're driving your car one day and all of a sudden, as you're in your commute, you just begin to, to um, speak to God. Or maybe you're walking around your house or, or even at work somehow and all of a sudden you feel drawn to pray. It's, it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit that, that calls us, God himself calls us, draws us to speak to him. And in this situation, God the Son, Jesus, he speaks to the crowd and, and singles out this man. And this man comes to him and beseeches him, says to him, Teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by a spirit um, that has robbed him of speech. He explains the problem. He says that, that, that the spirit seizes him and, and, and affects him, throws him to the ground, and, and he begins to speak to Jesus and tell him, and I believe that when we pray, God wants us just to converse with him. God wants it to be a, a dialogue, a back and forth. This prayer is, is, is really speaking to God, but also listening, hearing, communing. And so this, this father and Jesus begin to unpack what's going on with this book boy. So, so we hear all about it. And then he adds this part in verse 18 of Mark chapter 9. The father said, he, he, I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. They couldn't do it, Jesus. And so here I am, I'm before you. I wonder if you have issues in your life where you've gone to other people for help, for support, uh, and, and, and you've gotten a measure of help or support, or you've gotten none. And out of that, it, it has caused you to, to come closer to God and say, God, I have to ask you myself, God, if you don't do it, it won't be done. God, would you enter into my situation? You see how long it has existed. You see what it's all about. God, would you come and, and, and meet me in this? This was the situation with this father. Jesus then leaves the conversation with, with the, the father and, and speaks to the crowd perhaps even directly to, to his disciples as well. But he speaks to the crowd, he speaks to everyone, and he says, you unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? And then he says, bring the boy to me. Let me deal with this. We've been talking about faith as well and, and, and the fact that we believe in faith turned towards God. Not just blind faith, not just faith in believing that, that, that good things will happen or faith out to the universe, throwing things out there. No, we believe in a faith based on the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who went to the cross, who, was, who died, who was buried, who was resurrected and, 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 and dealt with the issue of sin so that we could be connected to the Father God the creator of the universe. And when we accept that, when we believe that, when we stand on that, we can come and speak to God in prayer and expect that God will do something. And so here in this situation, he's saying, you unbelieving generation, you haven't gotten it yet. But here's this man speaking to him about his child. So they did, they brought this boy to Jesus. And like many issues, when we begin to, to, to reckon with God over an issue, when we begin to pray about something, isn't it interesting that sometimes it looks like it's getting worse before it gets better? Or that situation in the natural, as we see it, begins to look more impossible in some way? But these spirits, this evil spirit, yes, it looked like this, this, this boy just had seizures, but, but it's very clear in scripture that it was an evil spirit. He was possessed demonically. Something was not right here, and, 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 and it, didn't, it wasn't natural. And because of this, this spirit, when it saw Jesus, immediately threw the boy on the ground, and he began to convulse. It exposed himself. The issue was clear. So the boy fell to the ground, he rolled around, he was foaming at the mouth, all of it manifested, it showed up. 
And sometimes when we're praying, you know, and we're seeking God for something, it, it, it manifests negatively, that issue that, that we're praying about. And I want to encourage you. That's why in, in, in the Gospels it talks about the fact that we should ask and keep on asking. Pray and keep on pr praying. Don't cease in your prayers. Don't give up on it. Because sometimes when, when that issue is faced by the reality of, of God and God's ability to intervene, sometimes it acts up. Sometimes it looks worse. But what it led to was more communication, more connection between Jesus and this father. In verse 21, after this happens, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? How long has he been like this? And, and, and as I see this, this is Jesus here. Jesus is God. Jesus is, is God the Son. Jesus knows everything about everything. Yet he asks the question. And, and I'm struck by the fact that because we come to a, a, a holy father, a heavenly father, who knows everything about our situation, he still requires that we pray. He still requires that we ask of him. He still requires that we speak to him about it, connect with him about whatever the situation is. So Jesus asked the question, maybe it was for the crowd. Maybe it was for the purpose of dialogue with this man. And this father explains. I want to suggest to you that as you pray, sometimes we say, I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't know how to approach God. Well, you can approach God just by speaking to him, just like this father was communicating. And whatever God prompts in your heart to, to pray, whatever comes to you to, to say to God, you just say it like you're saying it to a friend. And so here he, he speaks and, and this father explains, he says it's been since childhood. It has often thrown him into fire and water to kill him. And then the father says, as he thinks of the fire and the water and, 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 and the length of time this situation has existed for, this father says a simple thing, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. But if you can do anything, Jesus, would you take pity on us? and help us. What a simple prayer. What an honest prayer. What a humble prayer. Jesus responds in verse 23. If you can, says Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. If you can, says Jesus, Everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the father's boy exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe. I believe, but I have doubts. I, I, I don't know what's possible because you see, Jesus, I've seen this situation with my son play over and over and over again. And here we are. Your disciples couldn't do anything. But I do believe. Would you help my unbelief? Would you help me overcome my unbelief? I wonder if you're there about some of the situations that you face, face in your life. I wonder if, if you're in a position where, where, where you wonder if God is able to do it because no one else has been or because the issue has, has lasted for so very long. But the words of Jesus say, everything is possible to those that believe. So in verse 24, it says, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the, a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Hmm. I do believe. 
Help me overcome my unbelief. Life sometimes puts us in that position. <laughs> you know, it's been so long. It's gone wrong for so long. Jesus, I believe you can, but, but would you help me with the part of me that, 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 that isn't sure if you can do it? In Hebrews, it tells us that, 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 that we, when we come to God, must believe that God is, and he rewards us that diligently seek him. And so as we come, we have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus can deal with whatever our situation is. We, we believe that, that through Jesus, um, something is going to happen when we pray, when we come before God. And this man was asking for two things. Help us out. Help us with, our, with my son. But also, would you help me overcome my unbelief? Jesus dealt with it. The crowd was pressing in. It was coming. And, and Jesus spoke to the evil spirit. Interesting that there were two parts to this. He spoke to the deaf spirit and the mute spirit. The, the, the things that keep us from being able to connect with God. Not just the, the, the auditory deafness, I believe, but also the, the spiritual deafness. The, the inability to respond to the voice of God, to the things of God. Sometimes the situations that we're facing are, are like that. It, it, it's tough. But he also spoke to the fact that this, this boy had lost his ability to speak. The, the, this, this spirit had taken that over from him. This boy was bound. And sometimes in our own lives, we, we are in a place, a situation where we, we can't speak truth. We can't speak to things as God would want us to. And those are, are issues that God wants to deal with. Spiritual deafness, not being able to, to, to hear what God is saying and understand that it's the voice of God speaking. And also muteness, the, the, the inability to, to, to be able to respond in truth to who Jesus is, to respond in truth about our situation so that we can be set free and Jesus says I command you to come out of him and never enter again you know when Jesus does a work it's final it's done it's freed oftentimes in scripture when we see Jesus healing he, he says things like go and sin no more change your lifestyle do something different and sometimes when we see those issues that God has dealt with returning to our lives it's often because we have um, gone back and reintroduced things into our lives that, that contaminate that, that, that are unlike the, the spirit of God and the spirit of truth that comes through Jesus and because of that we, we are re challenged, if you will, with those old issues. But Jesus says, come out of him and never enter him again. In verse 26, it says, the spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. You know, sometimes when God answers our prayers, when God relieves us of something we've been challenged with, when, when we fought through something and, and, and at the end of it, sometimes we feel a little empty and hollow. That's because you see that, that, that horrible situation or that difficulty that we were in, that, that we've been relieved at, of, had so, so inhabited us, so, so took control of our lives that, that, that we don't know how to live without the problem. We don't know how to live free. But now we live a life walking with Jesus. You see, he took that boy by the hand and helped him up. He lifted him up. The boy could now stand. And I believe that, that, that when God relieves us of something, he wants to fill us with more of himself. He wants to strengthen us to be able to stand now without that issue, without that problem in freedom. But also he wants us to stand full of the love of God, full of the peace of God, full of the joy of God. So sometimes after we've been relieved of something terrible, we pray and ask God to refill us, to refill us with himself. Here's what happened behind closed doors. 
The situation is dealt with. The boy is free. The communication between Jesus and the man is complete. Deliverance has come. Healing has come. Freedom has come. An answered prayer has come. Then the communication begins with Jesus and his disciples. It says in verse 28, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Why couldn't we deal with this? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. This kind can only come out by prayer. Some manuscripts actually say by prayer and fasting. This kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. They're serious. It's not just something we figure out and so many situations in our life hit us and there's lots of things we feel as though we can handle on our own so we don't communicate with God about it. But the word of God tells us that we should pray all the time. We should be in communication all the time. We see, we see it in the letters that Paul wrote, that, that, that communication with God should be something we always do. But there are things that cannot be done in our own strength, the stubborn issues, the difficult issues. And Jesus said, this is one of them. When you're dealing with evil spirits, when you're dealing with, with situations that, that don't just move because um, you, you know what to do. It's a time for prayer, deep prayer, and it's a time for fasting. It's a time for connecting with God in a focused way. Well, this account is in Matthew, and in Matthew 17, when Jesus speaks to them about the problem, he, he, he says to them in, in Matthew 17, verse 20, he said, the, the, the issue is really because you have so little faith. He says, truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they asked in that situation, that's what Jesus wanted them to know. But in this situation, in Mark, when it's spoken of, he, he wants them to understand that it's about prayer and prayer and fasting, that some things need some focus, connecting with God in prayer and faith, believing that God can, that God will, that mountains can be moved. They need to apply their faith is what he's letting them know. And so back to Mark. He says this to him, them. He lets them know what it's about. And I want to say to you today, you see, Jesus spoke in, in, in Matthew as well about that need for fasting and prayer and, and wanted them to have lifestyles that, that involved those things. It, their customs had caused them to do it anyway. But Jesus added a layer of understanding of, of that we should pray and how we should pray and that we should fast and how we should fast. And so when the difficult things come, we can say, God, I'm not just eating, not eating because I'm full of anxiety or worry about whatever the situation is that I'm, I'm, I'm facing. No, I'm going to pray and I'm going to not eat. Lord, I'm going to pray and I'm going to miss breakfast and spend time with you and your word and focus in on whatever this issue is with you until change comes or with you for the next day or two or three, or, or Lord, I, I'm, I, I feel that you're calling me to, to focus in on this issue and, 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 and only drink water for the next day or two or three or whatever he asks of you, because Lord, I want to see this mountain move. I believe that you can do something here. So because this father was willing to converse with Jesus, left everyone else behind, and knew that Jesus was his answer. His communication with Jesus was used to bring healing to his son. We believe in prayer. We believe that our communication with God makes a difference when we come through Jesus and deal with the situation. 
Jesus wanted the disciples to know there are some things that only can be dealt with that way. In the Gospel of John, as I get ready to close, Jesus is preparing the disciples for, for his, his ascension, his leaving them. And over a few chapters, he's speaking to them and he's ministering the love of God into them and showing them how they need to be for the future. He's praying for them and praying for us, the world. But in verse 14, I want to take you to what it says in verse 12. This is Jesus speaking. It says, Verily, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. In verse 13, it says this of John 14, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, says Jesus, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Well, Jesus cast out these evil spirits and brought order to this boy's life. And here in John 14, he's saying that, that through prayer, we can ask these things of God and God can and will do it. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring freedom. Our job is to ask in the name of Jesus. Our job is to come believing that God can and that God will, and knowing that God has. And if he can do it through Jesus in the flesh, he can do it through us when we pray in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you today in your prayer life, that connection you and I have with God. We come through Jesus, who is God the Son, and we speak to him about God the Father and God moves. Today, whatever your issue is, whatever you're dealing with it, know that God can through prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for speaking to us. Would you help our unbelief? Lord, with the faith we have, we can move mountains if mountains need to move. So Lord, I ask that you would keep us in communication with you always through prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everyone, thanks so much for being here and worshiping with us. Uh, we had a great time in worship and we really hope that you did as well. Uh, we really hope that you just continue to stay connected with us. You can connect with us at TGP Connect on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also find us on YouTube. We hope that you continue to give uh, in this season and every season. Uh, it's something that continues to support the church and the mission that's going on here and also around the world. So uh, we hope that you continue to give in this time. Thanks so much for being here again, and we hope to see you next time. See ya.